Now, it comes as the New York Times is reporting on its front page today that NATO allies are considering sending troops into Ukraine, not to fight the Russians, but rather to train Ukrainian forces to fight the Russians. Let's bring in retired Lieutenant General Mark Schwartz, former United States Security Coordinator. Mark, good to see you again. Your, your take on what the Times is reporting here. Well, I think it certainly um, amplifies the comments that were made by, you know, the U.S. Uh, chairman of the Joint cha uh, Staff, excuse me, uh, General Brown, who said that, you know, sending military trainers to Ukraine is is an inevitable. So there's obviously been some very high level uh, discussions with between the Defense Department and the executive branch of the U.S. government regarding uh, the ask that has been, you know, longstanding by Ukraine to provide more training and advisory support uh, to the Ukraine military. I think also just given the, the number of casualties that Ukraine has suffered, that the fewer uh, service members that they have tied up in, the, in their training institutions and they can leverage you know, the United States and, and other members of the alliance will only you know, help Ukraine not only with throughput, but also keeping experience on the front lines versus back in the training centers. Yeah, I, I've got my copy of the Times here, Mark, with me. Uh, I just want to show it uh, if I can, because basically what it's saying here is that the Ukrainians have got about 150,000 troops that uh, they're hoping to train, and they need those NATO trainers. Uh, it, it goes on to say, you know, that the Allies are inching closer, but as you point out, the United States still very resistant to doing that, but that, you know, Ukraine needs that kind of advanced training ASAP. This is something that France and the UK seem to have kind of indicated that they might be uh, willing to do. Uh, no doubt the Russians would be completely outraged over this. What sort of escalation might it lead to, Mark? What do you think? Well, I think the, uh, you know, the, the calculated risk since the onset of, you know, Russia's invasion uh, that took place, you know, a couple of years ago now, has been an ongoing with not just the United States, but NATO at large. And so, you know, the uh, change and the increasing lethality and range of uh, certain weapon systems to include, you know, fighter aircraft, long range um, artillery, uh, the uh, DPICM munitions that uh, cluster bomb, you know, type munitions that are now being provided to Ukraine, all of those decisions uh, were backed up by some very uh, deliberate risk analysis um, by the United States military in, you know, in coordination with the executive branch. So I, I think the fact that the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has made this uh, you know, comment publicly says that they've done that analysis and they don't believe that um, we will see an escalation in terms of uh, primary, uh, primary concern, excuse me, is NATO attacking an alliance country that would further draw um, you know, military um, a military response by U.S. or NATO forces against uh, against Russia in Ukraine. Yeah, and I, and I just want to be clear, and I, you just pointed it out, you know, that the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the U.S. has said, you know, no for now, but we'll get there eventually over time. Right now, we'd put a bunch of NATO trainers at risk. But we're not just talking about France. Also, the Estonians, the Lithuanians have sort of indicated that they are willing to help as well. Uh, what do you think the Russian response might be, uh, Mark, to this? Because, uh, you know, they, they seem to have said that's a red line for them. Uh, you know, even if it's trainers, they do not want any NATO troops within Ukraine, although I think it's fair to say there may already be some specialists operating in Ukraine, kind of on the on the down low, so to speak? Yeah, there's certainly been indications that um, other nations have provided their special operations forces, some of the some of the countries countries that you named. The majority of the training has been going on either in, you know, in Poland or, you know, back at the Joint Military Training Center in Germany um, up to this point. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, President Putin's psyche, but I, I don't assess from what I do know that this would be would cross a red line for him in that uh, he would try to attack, you know, one of the alliance countries as a result of the deployment of of trainers and advisors. I think we have to remember too that there's a significant number of uh, non-alliance countries off the European continent that are adding to the Russian, you know, force structure and obviously a significant amount of 
military hardware and equipment coming from China, coming from Iran. North Korea has, has offered capabilities as well. So um, I think in terms of the escalation scale, while uh, President Putin may be very uh, upset about it, um, you know, candidly, we need to do all we can um, without crossing a red line to see a direct military confrontation with a NATO country um, in support of President Zelensky and you know, the Ukraine people and, and ultimately the Ukraine military. Mark Schwartz is a retired lieutenant general with the United States military, former U.S. security coordinator, joining us today from Colorado amid reports NATO is considering sending trainers to help the Ukrainians now on Ukrainian soil. Mark, good to see you. Thanks for taking time for us in Canada, as always. Thank you.